So, you decided to get yourself a first reef tank? Stop right there. Don't get anything until you do your research. In this hobby, plenty of folks tend to buy things they don't need in the beginning and end up spending way more money than they plan to. First thing what we're going to need is clean water. Clean water we can get either from a local fish store or we can make our own by buying a certain filters that will filter water so it's safe to use in a reef tank. These filters and no other filtration for a reefing hobby might be intimidating at first, but trust me it's not and getting filters right off the bat will save you a lot of money along the way if you decide to stay in a hobby. Next thing, what you have to do is make out of fresh water, salt water. Most of the people out there will use salt mix so they can add it to their fresh water. And at this point, we're gonna need a measuring tool so you can measure how much of salt we added to the water. Don't buy a swing arm hydrometer and just go for reflectometer right off the bat or even something better. When you're using these devices to test your water, make sure that the salinity of your water is 35 parts per thousand or a 1.026 specific gravity. There's three options when you guys start looking into aquariums. First option is the cheapest option, like for instance 40 gallons breeder from Fepco and run that tank on hand on a back filtration. Second option is going to be all-in-one tanks. All-in-one tanks are actually the ones that I suggest for you to get if you're just starting into this hobby. Why? They're very easy to set up and in the back there's a compartments where you can hide all of your filtration, your auto top off and everything else you can run your reef tank. But you think if you're the person that you're gonna stay in this hobby long term and if you like bigger fish and overall like big tanks, I would suggest then for you to get the reef ready system where you can get more water volume, where you can have a sump underneath your stand, where you can add better quality equipment, like for instance, better larger skimmer, refugium, etc. And don't be afraid to get the bigger size tank since all the money that you'll be saving is just the money that you'll spend on that tank actually. All the filtration and everything else that you'll be getting for that 60 gallon tank is pretty much the same as you would use a 180 gallon tank. So yes, you'll spend way less money in the beginning on that tank, but afterwards when you start looking into filtration and everything else, you'll spend similar amount of money for a smaller tank as you would if you would go with larger tanks. When you do start looking for a tank, that's a perfect time for you to start looking for a lighting. Since most of the time you're gonna have to match the lighting for the footprint of the tank that you'll be getting. And since we're talking about lighting, most of the lights will cover areas between 24 and 24 inches, which is two foot by two foot. And lighting is crucial for growth of our corals, since most of the corals that are imported for this hobby are photosynthetic, which means they're getting all of their energy from lights instead of the food like fish do. And that's why it's very important for you to pick the lighting fixture that it's adequate for the corals you'll be getting. A good way to go about this is to mimic tank that has corals that you would like to keep. And of course, you can even go better route and rent or buy a PAR meter, which is a device that measures how strong and how good of a spread lighting has. That way, you're gonna make sure that your corals that will be keeping your tank have adequate amount of lighting, since some of the corals like less lighting, like soft corals, like LPS corals, and some corals like hard corals like lots of lighting. Usually, all the soft corals and LPS corals like to have their power values to be anywhere between 50 and 200. And all the hard corals that demand more of the power values, they like to be anywhere between 200 and 400 or so micromoles. Next up is flow. Flow is very important for corals and fish that we keep in our reef tanks. And as some of the hard corals demand more lighting, those same corals demand more flow. And like some of the corals demand less lighting, usually those corals demand less of a flow as well. Flow is very important since without flow, we cannot get that water rippling on top of our fish tank. Since that top surface of the water, when it ripples, it makes the oxygen exchange happen between outside air and your reef tank. And in that way, you're gonna ensure that your corals and fish are getting enough oxygen in the water so we can keep them alive and well in our reef tanks. For all corals and fish out there, there's two parameters that we're gonna have to be making sure they're stable all the time but don't get worried these are very easy to keep stable and those are salinity and temperature 
For temperature, most of hobbyists are using heaters together with temperature controller to keep that temperature stable in the reef tanks. And as far as salinity goes, most of the reef fills we get a device that's called ATO device, which has sensors on it and a pump. And basically the sensor will tell a pump when it has to refill that tank with fresh water. If we don't keep that with water and fluoration in our reef tanks and leave our tanks be for a longer period of time, the salinity or amount of salt that's in our water is gonna start raising, which won't be adequate for animals that we keep in our reef tanks. Next thing on the list is sand and rock. There's basically two options that you can get as far as sand and rock. There's a live sand, there's dry sand, there's live rock, and there's dry rock. The best advice for all beginners out there is to use live rock and live sand since both of those have bacteria on them, which is gonna make you cycle your tank faster. What that basically means that you're gonna be able to add fish and corals sooner rather than later. The best live rock that you can get is the live rock that's been in the system that didn't have corals or fish in the system for quite some time. And that way, that live rock is gonna help you start up your system and not introduce some of the pests that are coming in this hobby. And when you do end up adding fish and corals, I'll suggest for you to get a fish that's quarantined already or the fish that's captive bred. Since that way, you're gonna make sure to never introduce none of the pests that are bothering your fish. And the best first fish that you can get in this hobby is the fish that eat algae, like for instance, snakes or rabbit fish. If you decide to get smaller tank though, you're gonna have to add more of the invertebrates that are gonna be munching on that algae. But if you decide to go with bigger tank, I suggest for you guys to add the tank or rabbit fish right at the bat, since algae is one of the bigger problems that new reefers have when they're setting up their new tank. So get fish that eats algae, get invertebrates that are gonna help you with that algae as well. And as far as corals go, I suggest for you guys to get the corals that have been in the hobby for a long time. Since when you decide to purchase corals, there's two types of corals that you can get. You can get corals that are newly imported from the ocean, or you can get corals that have been established in the hobby and then have been in the hobby for a long time. And that route is gonna be way better for you since those corals are already established and used to being a reef tank and they're just way more robust of a corals than freshly imported corals. When you do get your corals, there are certain dips that we dip our corals and since all of the corals are coming on some type of frag plug or frag disc, usually we'll remove that and introduce just a healthy piece of coral in our reef tank. And that way we're gonna make sure not to introduce none of the coral pests or some of the other different type of algae that we don't want to have in our reef tanks. When we added fish to our fish tank, next thing what you have to do is of course feed them. Like kibble is for dogs, flakes and pellets are for fish. And like for instance raw diet and some of the healthier diet is for dogs, that's gonna be frozen seafood for fish. And in most of the cases, flakes and pellets will pollute your water way more with phosphates than the frozen seafood which is more rich in amino acids and nitrates with fish and corals prefer better than phosphates. Most of reefers will feed their fish with both varieties of food and I suggest for you guys to do the same. Now since we're putting food in our tank which is gonna pollute the water of the tank, we're gonna have to add some of the pieces of filtration which are going to remove all that pollutants. There's a quite a lot of pieces of filtration out there. The one that most of reefers are using is a skimmer. A skimmer is basically a device that has a pump which makes bubbles and those bubbles will collect all the poop and all uneaten food that fish didn't have a chance to eat and I'll push that food all the way up into the skimmer cup which you guys are gonna end up removing it and cleaning it once in a while. There's other pieces of filtration, like for instance mechanical filtration, like filter socks are, and some of the filter rollers. And there are some algae filters out there, like for instance algae scrubbers and refugiums. I've been using skimmer and refugium for years, but there's lots of other reefers that use different type of equipment, which you can look into. For beginning, all you need is a skimmer, and that's a very good starting point since the water in the beginning is gonna be very clean. And if you add up lots of filtration in your tank in the beginning, you're gonna have a problem with too much of the clean of the water. All corals out there like to have their water to be a little bit dirty, not too clean and not too dirty. So let's talk about testing. Three parameters that you guys are gonna be testing is salinity, temperature, and alkalinity. And other two are phosphates and nitrates. And those two are gonna be telling you how dirty or how clean your water is. 
And yes, there's other parameters out there you guys are gonna have to be checking, but in the beginning, if you can do just these five, you'll be going pretty good. If you guys decide to go with some of the stony corals, then I suggest for you guys to keep an eye on that pH as well. But don't worry about that since you're just starting in a hobby. Most of the time, you won't get into hard corals right off the bat. You're gonna start with soft corals, some of the LPS corals. So go that route. Don't rush in the beginning and try to enjoy as much as you can. If you made it so far, make sure to watch some of the other videos that are on YouTube. You can always check out the videos that I made on my YouTube channel. The more more research you do, the more money you're gonna be saving in this hobby, and the more tanks you see out there, the better idea you're gonna have which corals and fish you like to keep. If you guys would like to get into hard corals, take your time, do your research, but the very good starting point will be my Acropora videos that I've done on this channel, so go and check them out, they're gonna leave the playlist here in the side. Welcome to the hobby, happy reefing, and see you guys in the next video, peace.